welcome to the three techs and today we have my colleagues bob fairbairn and tony tang and me stephen bramson today we're going to look at a really interesting piece of equipment it's the black magic atem mini every once in a while a new breakthrough product arrives and shatters all expectations and price points of its predecessors this year in the video world that product is the Blackmagic A10 Mini. The A10 Mini is a professional grade video switcher with the ability to switch among four different HDMI video sources. It can output to HDMI and also to a computer connected via USB-C for live streaming and web conferencing. Features that were previously only available on video switchers costing three times or more like chroma key for replacing green screen backgrounds and digital video transitions are now available to any professional or gamer who wishes to level up their video. In addition to four HDMI inputs with video and stereo audio, the A10 Mini also features two additional stereo microphone inputs which can be split into four mono channels for a total of 12 audio inputs. Each input channel has a 6-band parametric EQ, expander or gate, compressor, and limiter to professionally shape your sound. There are many built-in transitions and digital video effects that can be controlled using the buttons on the control panel. A free ATEM software control application allows you to access all the settings and features of the ATEM Mini and set up advanced macros and effects. The built-in picture-in-picture engine allows you to overlay yourself on camera on top of another video source, and the built-in keyer allows you to replace a green screen background with any still image or live video input source. All these features are now available in the A10 Mini for just $295 US dollars. There's even an A10 Mini Pro version that adds the ability to record a video file to a connected USB-C drive, live stream using the built-in Ethernet port, and to independently switch the HDMI output or see a multi-view to preview all the video sources, preview, and program on a single screen. The ATEM Mini Pro is just $595 US dollars. The Blackmagic ATEM Mini, a breakthrough video switcher for the masses. Bob, you've been waiting a while for this unit, right? I mean, these are in pretty high demand these days with everybody working from home and doing Zoom calls, WebExes, two, two months. months. Yeah, two months. Wow. So in order to do the recording, I've been using a different device. We've been using the Magwell so that I could get the camera into the Mac. And that's what Steven uh, for, uses, right? Steven, right, you've got yeah. a couple of yes. those Magwells. Okay, Steven so was the one who said, turned me on to it. I said, okay, that's great. We got that. How much was the Magwell? 350 and what does it do hdmi to usb so it's video. just a video capture device converts video an hdmi capture. signal okay yep and the black magic a10 mini how much was that so 295 dollars and what does it do it's a video switcher switches between four cameras it is a complete video control panel it is a complete audio control panel because it has two microphone inputs and so you can do complete video and audio recording it will control black magic cameras from it so you can change focus you can zoom you can do everything you need to do with the black magic cameras right from this one little box that sounds amazing yes let's kind of go over what's what's sitting here because it looks daunting it looks a lot different from the last time we saw your home set up here. So yeah, definitely walk us through everything because I've noticed you've got a new camera. You actually picked up the Rodecaster Pro and you've got a lot of screens in front of you. So walk us through all this stuff. Yeah, sure will. This monitor here used to be the second screen on the Mac. Now it's hooked up to a Windows PC because I'm doing some Windows demos and some work I need to do for Windows. And of course, underneath it here, the Rodecaster Pro, which gives me really nice control over my audio are you using big bottom i think so i think <laughs> okay. it's all turned Some apex on apex processing okay yes apex it is nice. nice and the big thing it kills all the noise around you 
then this is an iPad Pro 12.9, which is acting as a second screen for the Mac. Okay, so you're using Sidecar. Using Sidecar, right. This screen is the web browser with the Mimo call in it right below the camera. So when I look at the camera and I'm looking at the screen, it looks more like Bob's looking at the camera. Okay, so you're not looking off to the side or something right, like I'm that. Right, I'm not when off looking, looking at your off to the side. Okay, and which camera is that up there? Oh, that's the Sony RX106. If you look yeah. at my view, I'm narrow because I am in stills mode. You got the black okay. bars on the side there. Okay. Black bars on the side. Yep. This is just a really inexpensive little HDMI display. It is the video out of the ATEM, so I can see what's going on. So that's the miniature monitor you have. Yeah, I use that when I'm. Uh, debugging PCs and stuff, I can carry a monitor with me. So I've always got an HDMI monitor with me. That oh, doesn't take very handy. Room. It's got VGA in it, $69 or $79 on Amazon. The ATEM right there, and it's kind of funny. It's so small. <laughs> and yeah, what's yeah. that on the Mac screen that you've got up there? So on the Mac screen is the ATEM control software. So you can control the ATEM from the buttons on the front. I have the ATEM hooked up to the Mac via USB. So that does two things. That turns this thing into a webcam, effectively. The Mac thinks that the ATEM is a webcam. It happens to be a really fancy webcam, but it thinks it's a webcam. The other thing that the ATEM will do on the back of the ATEM, it has an Ethernet port, and you can control this remotely from somewhere else over Ethernet. The other cool thing is you could have multiple people controlling the same ATEM Mini. So you could have one person who's just doing video switching, you could have another person connected over Ethernet on a different computer with the same ATEM control software who's in charge of the media pool and pulling up the graphics that you want to put up on screen, and a third person who may be doing audio mixing, all connected to the same ATEM Mini, and a fourth person who's responsible for shading the cameras, adjusting the focus, the zoom, the color balance, and all that, Four different people all connected over Ethernet to the ATEM Mini controlling different aspects of the switcher. That's really cool. You could have a VPN going and you could have someone controlling ATEMs at a whole bunch of different sites. This combined with this camera or an even better camera is a phenomenal method of producing video. So what software does that work with? Does it work with Zoom and WebEx and... Absolutely. We're using it with Mimo Call here. I've used it with FaceTime. I've used it with Zoom. And I've used it with Meet.Google. And I've also used it with WebEx. So those are the ones I've tested with. Some of the virtual cameras out there that you've seen, like being able to turn, for example, your iPhone into a webcam and that sort of stuff, some of those virtual cameras only work in certain software because it's right. software driven, but this is fully hardware, right? So it works in all software. There's a fairly large learning curve with this device, but once you get it, it makes doing presentations and stuff just brilliant. To do the camera HDMI to computer USB, instead of using the Magwell that you were using before, you're using the ATEM Mini to do that. Right. A USB cable out of the back of the ATEM Mini. Camera one is the Sony. There's an HDMI cable from the Sony. Input one, input two and three currently don't have anything hooked up to them. And input four is a second display on the Windows PC right now, which we'll do some stuff here in a little bit with. So you've got four video inputs on the ATEM Mini. Right. And it's got one output, and basically the ATEM lets you switch between the four inputs to choose what goes on the output. So the ATEM Mini has two outputs, really. There's one that is just a pure HDMI video and audio signal, which, Bob, you currently have connected to that small monitor there on your desk. Right. And then Correct. the second one is that USB-C style interface that you've got connected to your iMac there. So, yes. yeah. yeah. Let's go ahead and dive into some of the ATEM Mini features here and see what we can do with it. I think a lot of people who are working from home want to be able to present slides with their computer and also be on camera to keep their audience engaged. So sure. can you show us what the ATEM Mini can do for you in that area? Absolutely. So now I'm going to switch over to the Windows PC and you saw that was instantaneous. Now switch back over to me 
and I'm going to do this auto, and you can control this, and then it does a little little fade over, so well, I fade dissolve, out and yeah. fade back in. Very and nice. can you control the speed of that dissolve, like if you wanted it to be faster or slower? Absolutely. So Yeah, so for instance, let's make it two seconds. Okay, nice slow dissolve there. Yeah, I can pick all kinds of different dissolves. So for instance... Well, you've got, and you've got dedicated buttons too, right, on right. the HM Absolutely. Mini where you can choose different types of wipes. All these different buttons to change them, so here's a different one. Okay, right. I, was, I was hoping you yeah. could do a Star Wars wipe, which was the, the horizontal one, or the cooler Star Wars one which is the iris wipe. Right, yeah. Right, so... at the, at the, oh, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> but is there Star Wipe? That's the question. I don't think so, but... We'll, we'll move on. Oh. So you've got a variety of video transitions that you can use there. You can use it with or without the computer software control. But the ATEM Mini has a single kind of DVE processor engine in it. So if you have right. the transition set to one of the DVE wipes or something like that, you won't be able to turn on any of the other keyers or the picture-in-picture -picture feature. So you got to make sure that the effect is reset back to a simple mix or a cut. I had DVE set. I have to flip it back to mix. And DVE is digital video effect? Correct. One of the things that's really nice is for people to be able to see me presenting and talking. I'm going to switch the input from my camera to the Windows PC. Okay, and again, that's input four on your ATEM? Yeah, that's input four on my ATEM. You can see the different PowerPoint pages. That's a live input. And then I'm going to go over here, put it in presentation mode. So there we are in presentation, and we can step through the slides and so forth. But that's a little boring just looking at the slides. So what I'll do is I'm going to bring in the presenter. I'm going to bring in myself. So now I've pressed picture in picture, and I put and myself in the lower corner and you can see me talking now there's a couple of things that's not perfect about that you got all of this stuff that's behind me and you can see these black bars that we were talking about before it's not bad and i can run my powerpoint presentation now here now what if on your slide you've got something behind that picture in picture view can you move where that picture in picture shows up on your screen yeah, absolutely Bob? so if there's something where i'm in the road like i'm kind of in the road there I can move myself over here out of the way. There's four okay. buttons for each corner. So you can put yourself in any of the four corners there? Any of the four corners, right. So there's that corner, that corner, that corner, that corner. And you've got dedicated buttons on the A10 Mini to do that. That's great. Dedicated buttons to move it. And if you want to switch back to your camera, can you do that? Push the camera button, and now I'm back to the camera. Nice. So you can go full screen to kind of re-engage people so they're not staring at your slides and that can focus their attention more, especially on a virtual meeting. What other tricks does this thing have? One of the other tricks that I kind of like is it's a lot of fun to be natural. So I'm in my office, you know, it's a little noisy behind me. So maybe we ought to get rid of the noise behind me. What do you think? How are you going to do that? Ah, I'm glad you asked. Curiously enough. Okay. <laughs> Ta-da. One screen that is green. So that looked like you just pulled it down from the ceiling, right? Is that like one of those projector screens, but it's green and you can just retract it? Thank you, Amazon. Yes, it's, <laughs> it's exactly what it is. And there was a wait getting one of these too. So yes, I now have a green screen. Okay, so now you've got a green screen, but how do you use the ATEM Mini to replace it with something else? What we've got here is the ATEM control software. In the palettes section of the controls, in the upstream keyer, we've switched over to chroma. We are going to sample the color of the green screen behind me. It's the background, and we want to make everything else behind me go away. This could be right. done with a blue screen as well any other color screen. It just so happens that most screens are green because that is the color that seems to be reproduced the best using electronic video cameras because those sensors are most sensitive to green. So you get the best kind of 
key out of that. Right. The other thing is that what we're doing here by keying is we're basically cutting a hole, right, in your video so that whatever is green will see through to something else in the background. Right. So that's what the key is. So once you sample that green color, Bob, what right. happens then? We have to turn on the key. We're going to pick a background that the key is going to replace. I'm going to switch over here and I'm going to tap on the media button of this thing. And I have uploaded one of my pictures and I did something that's kind of important. I resized it to 16 by 9. So this is now a 16 by 9 picture. Okay, so you cropped it to a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, which is a standard HD aspect ratio. So it's going to fit perfectly in a video screen without any black bars on the top or sides. Correct. So right now, the video source is Bob, okay? I'm going to switch the video source to the media player in the ATEM by clicking on the MP1 button here. And now, now you see that photograph, and you see that it's full screen edge to edge. Bob, where's that still picture stored? It's currently stored in the ATEM. Is that on an SD card, or is there some internal storage? It's internal storage on the ATEM, yeah. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is turn on the keyer so to insert myself back into the image. And now there's Bob keyed in to that photograph. There needs to be more light on that screen behind me. The screen is not well lit. And if we light the screen better, it will make uh, the keying look dramatically better. That's cool. So you could have anything behind you any still image behind you. You can have moving images behind you. Wow. Yeah, because you could actually key yourself over one of the other live video input sources, right? So you could have ah, some sort okay. of playback going in through like input two, three, or even four, which you currently have your Windows machine plugged into, and key yourself over that live video. So uh, speaking of which, before we were seeing how you did PowerPoint and you did picture in picture, could you now key yourself over that PowerPoint? Absolutely. So I will change what's behind me effectively by switching over to the PowerPoint and then turn the key back on. And now there's Bob in front of the PowerPoint. And there you are. Okay. So now that you're in front of your PowerPoint, can you switch the PowerPoint slides behind you and advance them? Absolutely. So we can talk through the slides and move okay. through them. But obviously you're blocking the slides because you're kind of covering up the content there. So is there yeah. anything you can do about that? Yes, there is. You can change my size. And so there's an up down button and you can start shrinking, my, shrinking myself. And rather than me pushing lots of little buttons and you watching, we found that 0.4 instead of 1.0 seems to be about the right size. So there I am at 0.4 size. Okay, but you're still kind of floating in the middle of the screen there. So can you reposition yourself at all? I can move myself to the bottom right corner. If you notice on the screen here, not only do we have size, we also have position, X, Y, and position. I'm going to move myself down by clicking on the Y button, down. So I'll say down to about there. And then I'm going to click on the X button, up, to move myself over there. So now I'm in the corner out of the way of the presentation. Okay. And you've still got the background that's showing through behind you. So yes. if you were to switch slides, that we can see that change here, right? Through the different slides. Right. And I'm still there presenting. Well, that's cool. But if you're in the middle of a presentation, you don't want to be clicking all those buttons to shrink yourself and then to reposition yourself on the screen. So what can you do to quickly recall that position and setting? Now that I have this setting chosen, there are two storage places to store this setting. And I'm going to put this one in B. I'm going to click set B. So I'm going to save that myself, this position in B. And so now I'm going to run to full. So I'm back up here in front again, and then I'm going to okay. click on B, and I'm going to run back to this corner. Cool. Well, all I know is I've learned a lot here in the past couple of weeks with this gadget, and it's fabulous. It's a handy little device for $295. I think that if 
any of you out there are doing any sort of web conferencing with Zoom, this can seriously step up your game. It's great for live streaming as well because it just appears as a standard webcam. So I've actually played with both the Blackmagic ATEM Mini as well as the Blackmagic ATEM Mini Pro. So maybe we'll dive a little deeper into the differences between the Mini and the Mini Pro in a future episode. Yeah. For me, it ups my game quite a lot. And when I'm doing presentations for the Apple user group or for my customers or, or whatever it happens to be, this is really helping me do a better job. Yeah, it's all pretty cool. <laughs> it makes you, you know, be a one-man TV studio. So we hope you found this interesting taking a look at the A10 Mini and we'll see you next time on the three techs. A smile or something <laughs> as you're looking down at it. All right, I took it. Does it look okay? I'll send it to you. You, you can tell me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That'll do. That'll do. The, the ex Tony's expression is hilarious. <laughs>